dream come true And everything that I do Is out of love and you この曲のカバーでラバーズロックという新しいジャンルを作り上げた歌姫を訪ねた。The whole sentiment of the song is beautiful, you know. So that that I think that's what's what's carried that song through. I think I'd heard it before I was asked to cover it, um, and I just thought it was the most. The before I even go into the song, I just thought that Minnie Riperton had the most beautiful voice. You know, she had the vo you know the voice of an angel. It was so clean and it, it was so pure. Um, And you know, I, I was really young, but I, 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 you know, I've always known what a good voice is. Do you know what I mean? So, I think it's. I think the producer may have wanted to、um, create a very kind of natural、um, atmosphere, a very natural, a very pure sound, and he got that because, you know, Minnie Riperton's voice is very pure. So the track had to match that, and it and it all worked really well together. It's fantastic. And I think because I had that kind of higher register, that was what was he wanted for his, for the reggae version. I mean, the, the the backing track for that was brilliant. We had、um, Drummy Zeb on the drums from from Aswad,、um, and he did a wicked. He used to have you know this really wicked hi hat pattern that he used to play, very very technical, and it came across in that tune. And then they had the birds as well, and it was. You know, it was it, it was kind of a fresh sound actually, because I'd never heard any other reggae tune like it, and it was kind of the start of this whole kind of lovers rock. Because it's me, because I'm singing it like me. I mean, I wish I could have done her five octave high, but I didn't go there with I didn't go there with my version. And as I said, I've recorded it three times, and I didn't. I could have gone there, but I didn't go there. But I just think I I try to meld it in with the the whole reggae thing.、Um, I don't try to copy the original. I try to do it as Janet. So, how I'm singing it, you're getting me from that, from the song. You know, I may try to make it my own. Loving you is easy 'cause you're beautiful. Every day of my life, I'm more in love with you. Loving you is easy 'cause you're beautiful. Making love with you is all I wanna do. Loving you is more than just a 
dream come true And everything that I do Is out of loving you Loving you Is easy cause you're beautiful Making love with you Is all I wanna do の歌声を持つミニリパートのアルバムの裏ジャケットに記された言葉。愛にあふれた言葉を送った人物アベリースペシャルファンとは一体誰なのだろうか City という愛称を持つ町アメリカイリノイ州シカゴ古くはギャングの町として知られ第一次大戦中南部の黒人が仕事を求めて移住したことでこの町には大きな黒人コミュニティができた。ミニーリパートンは1947年シカゴの黒人の多いサウスサイドで生まれる鉄道の仕事をしている父と歌好きな母との家庭に育ち幼い頃からダンスレッスンやボイストレーニングを受けていたという。ラビンユーの作者でもあるリチャード・ルドルフ氏がミニーのことを語ってくれた。ミニーは、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、非常に、Great musicians. And、um, Minnie showed a, a great talent for singing at a very early age, and she studied with a,、uh, an opera singer when she was a young girl. It was very unusual, and that's where she developed her, her range as a coloratura soprano. She actually had eight octaves. But she also mixed this in with growing up in the south side of Chicago, which was a very soulful and musically funky place. And,、um, It's also where Chess Records was, and she started singing at Chess Records as a teenager. She was working there as a、uh, receptionist and doing backgrounds for all kinds of people. Nambu から Chicago に移住した黒人たちが生み出した文化 Chicago Blues. Blues はこの街の誇りとなり、1950年に設立された Chess Records は。シカゴブルースを世界へと広めた
ギー・パートンは10代の頃からチェスレコードで受付の仕事をしながらラムゼイルイスフォンテラバスエタ・ジェームスなどのレコーディングセッションのバックコーラスをしていた。やがてミニーは歌手としての才能が認められ女性コーラスグループジェムズのメンバーとして1963年レコードデビュー年代初めの音楽シーンではシュプリームスシュレルスなどガールズグループが大人気だったジェムズは7枚のレコードを出すがヒットには至らずミニーはこのグループを脱退音楽界にサイケデリックの波が起きるとチェスはこれまでにないコンセプトのグループを作ろうと考えロータリーコネクションという前衛的なバンドを結成ミニーはリードシンガーとして迎えられたこのバンドでの活動はミニーの音楽の幅を広げたそしてその頃ミニーに大きな出会いが訪れた It was at the、uh, Electric Theater, and I remember seeing her on stage. But just, you know, I was working, I was managing the theater. And、uh, then, like backstage, I was at the bottom of the stairs, and I looked up, and she was at the top of the stairs. And it was one of those, what you say, movie moments, you know. <laughs> well, it's,、uh, you know, it was just one of those things. We were both very young, and it's a short story. Because we just saw each other and connected like that. Like, oh. And we both, we both knew, and、uh, that's what happened. You know, we just knew right away. Come to my garden. Two of them are married. So, in 1970, Minnie was a little bit of a rotary connection to a bit of a solo singer to the album. I suppose it was rare. We weren't aware of it, but other people thought it was strange. We thought it was normal. But、uh, yeah, we, it, was a, it was a funny time in America for that kind of stuff, but we really weren't bothered by it. it was,、uh, we had a lot of strange things happen to us, but we just thought they were, the other people were strange. 彼らは大都市シカゴを離れ気候も温暖で自由な空気にあふれた
フロリダへと移り住んだ二人は新しい土地で子供を育てながら思う存分自分たちの作品を書き始めたラビン・ユーもここで形になったという。I started writing it in Chicago. I had just、uh, the idea for the, for the、uh, chord progression on the、uh, verse and chorus of the song. And I really liked that, but I didn't know what to do with it. So I was writing lots of songs. So I just kept this piece and was working with it. And、uh, then we went on the road and we ended up,、uh, we went up to Cape Cod. We went to New York City and then we came down to Miami, stayed in Coconut Grove, which is a very beautiful place in Miami. And、uh, still working on the song and wrote some other songs. And then we got to Gainesville, Florida, and、uh, lived there. And、uh, that's where Maya Chan was born. And I was writing the song. We lived near a duck pond, and I was writing it. And、uh, then we,、uh, we came out to California for a brief visit, and I had the idea for the bridge, you know, the other changes. So then we went back home, and we were just sitting around in the house in Florida. And I was playing it, and、uh, Minnie was in the kitchen cooking soul food. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, she, I was, so I was playing, and she just started to sing. La, 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 la. You know, I started singing stuff. I said, What? What? You know, and just started to write. It just came right out of our lives. But it took over a couple years, <laughs> you know, the whole thing from beginning to end. I was just waiting. Some songs, you know, you write right away, and this one came like that. She had heard it so, me playing so many times, and then finally one day, without thinking, just started singing while she was cooking. I n e a f r e t a f t a r i n o s e k a t s k a r a u m a r e t a y a s a s h i m e l o d y Want to be hold on her mother and nurse everything just all the time. So we had、um, a little swing, you know, the swing o m a t i c that she could sit, you know, the rocks the baby. And、uh, so lots of times I would play and Minnie would sing for Maya so she'd go to sleep. And sometimes, so then we made a、uh, little simple recording in those days, you know, with the、uh, reel to reel. And、uh, we made a loop. So that we could just keep playing it, and the baby thinks Minnie's still there, right? So I can finally go to sleep. Maya, Maya. 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 このアルバムのプロデューサーとしてミニーをサポートした大物ミュージシャンがスティービー・ワンダースティービーはミニーがロータリーコネクションで歌っていた頃から彼女の大ファンだった。We met Stevie and we said we want to work together and everything. And so、uh, Stevie had、uh, a deal at the time you know, with Motown. He said, I want to do it, but I can't use my name. So he said, I'll do if you produce with me. Me. I said, I can't produce with you, <laughs> you know, you're Stevie Wonder. But we did it. And we all became great friends and we made up a name,、uh, Scorbu Productions. 
is uh, the producer of the album because uh, I'm Scorpio and he's uh, Taurus, a bull. Yeah? And instead of writing Stevie Wonder on here, we wrote, uh, I called him El Toro Negro, means the black bull. Yeah? Stevie Wonder was El Toro Negro という名前で数々の楽器を弾き楽曲提供もした。そしてスティービーの元集まったのは、当時発売されたばかりのシンセサイザーを使い、スティービーと共に音楽作りをしていた二人のエンジニアだった。And we put that record out and got a big, huge write-up in Rolling Stone magazine. And the next thing I know is at the studio at night, and there is Stevie Wonder in a chartreuse green corduroy jumpsuit with his person. I think it was uh, John Harris. It was John Harris, yeah. And that was sort of the beginning of the end, so to speak, uh, because then we went through five albums with Stevie, or four albums. 後にスティービーの黄金傑作四部作と言われるアルバムを手掛けたのが彼らだったのだ当時この場所にあったレコードプラントスタジオ B で行われたそこには音楽を作る十分な時間と空間があった I don't know what was happening it just kept going on and flowing and sometimes we'd go to the studio and we think we're gonna do work on a song and Stevie would show up and say I got an idea or he wouldn't say anything he would just go and start to play and <laughs> play something else yeah. and we'd go off on another tangent the thing we had going because we had our own space is all the instruments were plugged in all the time. The piano, the synthesizer, the clavinet, the Rhodes, the vocal mics, the percussion uh, space. All the mics were hot all the time. And Steve would go from one instrument to another. So Stevie was Mini no time ni kyoku o kaita. Title wa Perfect Angel. What we're making is history Fooling impossibility Making love not a fantasy Love is true love is He wrote it for Minnie. He wrote it right there for Minnie. We saw it happen. It was pretty amazing. She was an amazing woman, an incredible person. And, uh, and Stevie loved her too. They were great friends, we all were. Just wonderful friends and such a beautiful friendship and uh, so much joy came out of making that album. It was a, it was a magical time, it really was. My first impression of Minnie singing, I was astounded at her range and her warmth. Those are the things that obviously goes without saying, a superb talent. I mean, you can have a great instrument, but you have to know how to use it, you know. And that came to her in a very natural way. I mean, I never knew Minnie until she walked in the studio. The first time I met her, I, I didn't know her on the outside. Or anything, she walked in the studio, and I was immediately captured by it. I saw what Stevie saw in her. I saw the same thing. So you listen to the Minnie Ripperton record, you will see that the records are very dry and they're very close to you, and that kind of intimacy is, I think, is what 
makes it good. I don't always want to listen to a band from the back of the hall. I want the player to be sitting like mm -hmm. I'm sitting with Dickie. I mm -hmm. want to be able to sit next to you and play to you. I want the music to surround people. The studio, the control room became the studio. You understand? Steve performed vocals in the control room. Minnie worked vocals in the control room. We would put the stereo monitors up, one speaker out of phase so that there would be no center image, and then we would put the microphone right at that place, and you could then do a vocal without having to wear earphones, which is a very different kind of mm. perspective, okay? There was no real glass between the studio mm. and the control room. Now we do it all like in the room we're in here now. We do everything in the room, every we take it of course. But in the, those days, there was a, the speakers were up over the window, up on the ceiling, and, why, and people still want to put the speakers up there for some strange reason. But God says that really we should be, yeah. our ears are designed to listen to sound this way, right? Not this way. Recording was we tried to record Loving You three different times, okay? and uh, each time with the band, you know, with his group Wonder Love was work on the album, and uh, each time we recorded the song a uh, different way, but many kept saying, ah, it's not right, it's just not right. So finally, uh, Stevie said, well, let's, uh, let's just do it very simple, right, the way you wrote it. We listened to it, and that's where we heard the mini singing Maya Maya, but we also heard uh, the birds outside the window were just singing on it. And so Stevie said, get the bird. So we had to go, we had to go find a bird. ステイビー・ワンダーのアイデアでスティービー・ミニーそしてリチャードはUCLAのボタニカルガーデンへ鳥を探しに向かった。We sit there and he says, "Okay, Minnie, sing for the birds." You know, so Minnie's singing very high and then bird starts to sing back, right? And Stevie's got his uh, tape recorder. I think it was Nagra. Really good tape recorder, and the birds start singing. <laughs> I think, wow, we're all crazy, but that's where the bird came from. Loving you, uh, I think, is sort of one of the high points for me oh, of that experience. Mm. And uh, strangely enough, it, the sound effects that we did, we put the bird sounds mm -hmm. on Minnie's song. And the reason, part of the reason that we did that was that being Stevie was unsighted. So it helped us create these sort of sonic environments, which were sort of to evoke a picture. So they really were more or less like soundtracks. ミニーの声、リチャードのギター、スティービーのフェンダーローズピアノ、そして鳥の声。すべてがシンプルに美しく響き合い。Love
アルバム「パーフェクトエンジェルは74年12月に発売されミニーは「ラビンユー」のシングルカットを望んだ。Because, um...ラビン・ユーは瞬く間に全米ヒットチャートを駆け上がりビルボード1位を獲得5億ターブの聖域を持った天使ミニーの歌声は全米に広がった。ラビンユーのヒットを受け次回作をすぐさまリリースプロデューサーにはクルセイダーズなどを手掛けたスティュアート・レディンが起用された順調に人気シンガーの道を歩んでいるように見えたミニーだったが76年胸に悪性の腫瘍が見つかったがんだった It all happened very fast She It kind of happened overnight She was still very young And this was、uh, Like 1976 When she was first diagnosed And And had to have surgery right away. And very shortly after that, you know, she had a recovery period. But everybody was telling her, don't say anything about it because it's not good for your career. And、uh, so she felt like, this is not right. I'm keeping a secret here and it's not right. And、um, I, shouldn't, I didn't do anything wrong. Why am I hiding this, right? And then she said, hmm, well, maybe I know I'm going to feel better if I talk about it. And maybe there's other people in the same situation, other women. And, Or just people in general that have something like this, so that、uh, maybe that could help them too. So she went on the Tonight Show very shortly thereafter. It was very, very short, you know, towards the beginning of it, that、uh, she went on the Tonight Show, and I think Flip Wilson was the guest host. And he said,、uh, Gee, I haven't seen you many. He was a friend of ours. He said, Where have you been? And she told the world. And、uh, I, the response was so positive. <laughs> がんを公表した後のミニーの活動は周囲も驚くほどポジティブなものだった。Now I'm healthy and alive, and I can run and love, and I can sing. Give to the American Cancer Society. You can help. 全米がん協会の教育会長に任命されたミニーは、多くの時間とエネルギーを教会のために費やした。そして音楽活動も精力的に続けた。Minnie Ripperton. She lost a breast, but saved the rest of her life. Help us cure cancer in your lifetime. I love music. I love life. I really enjoy. 
joy in my life. I really do. I really feel like I'm lucky. I get to sing to you and feel such good vibes. I get to do what I do. I'm just very lucky, yes. I guess you could say I'm one of those kinds of persons that would much rather look at the glass half full rather than half empty. ガンガサヤ。バックダウンメモリーレイ。I ミニの命の炎は燃え尽きようとしていた。ミニの命の炎は燃え尽きようとしていた。ミニの命の炎は燃え尽きようとしていた。ミニの命の炎は燃え尽きようとしていた。ミニの命の炎は燃え尽きよう
it's very, it is very pure and very innocent. And so I always try to keep it on that vein. That is the power of music, that you can touch somebody like that. And I didn't know that... I didn't know that I, that I, that I had that in me, that I could stand on the stage and sing something and have that effect on people. But it happened. With that song, it happened. Minnie somehow would get into this place and just transcend reality somehow with that song. But she loved it, like I said, and it was so pure. It was like I, I was telling you before, that song somehow just gives back the energy and the feeling. So the more you, the more she would sing it, the, the more she would feel from the people she was singing it for. Thank you. 